good evening everyone today we will discuss uh, indian constitution uh, now this is your paper, paper, gs paper 2 clevers this says governance constitution polity social justice and international relation now uh, as i have mentioned in earlier lectures as well gs2 and gs3 papers you know this is the core of gs preparation you know, even in your essay writing, you know, uh, understanding of GS2 and GS3 syllabus is very important. And nowadays GS2 and GS3 is filling over uh, into, you know, GS1 and GS4 paper as well. And in GS2 and GS3 paper, understanding of constitution is very important. So, you know, the core of GS syllabus is GS2 and GS3 and, and the core of GS2 and GS3 is con understanding of constitution. This is very, very important. Now, uh, I wanted to show you, you know, last year's previous question paper, uh, GS2 especially, but uh, what I thought that uh, first we will, you know, see some, you know, some part of the constitution, we will discuss Bayer Act and, uh, you know, first we will develop some understanding of constitution and then we will see the previous year's question paper, you know, that it will, you know, show that you are able to relate. So just wait for four or five lectures more uh, and then we will... Uh, Discuss previous question. Uh, now let us see, you know, read some part of the syllabus. What it says. Now see what is hiding says. Governance. They are talking about governance, constitution, polity, social justice, international relation. Okay. Now let's see what the you know what the Indian Constitution syllabus says. Indian Constitution historical underpinning. You know, they mean they are talking about you know how our constitution evolved. Okay. From, it's a long history from the regulatory act, but the main is 1935 act. Now, this is a kind of a paradox. Generally, from constitution, we have we drive act, but Indian constitution, you know, it was derived from an act. See, for example, what I mean to say, you know, nowadays we have an Indian constitution, and there is a you know act like say Companies Act or FRA or various act. So, you know, whatever is written in a particular act, it should you know should harmonized with constitution you know it is derived from constitution but indian constitution you know uh, we will see it was you know derived largely from government of india act 1935 and there are many reasons for that but the main is you know because you know diversity of india as we say that india is a community of communities you know a strong society is each state so that was the reason Okay, now Indian Constitution historical underpinning. You know how it then it evolution, how it evolved, right? Features, you know, features like DPSP, they are fundamental rights. It chapters on citizenship. You know, there is mention of uh, states. Uh, you know, uh, state list are there. You know, seven schedule. Then progressive legislation like you know seventy third and seventy four Constitution amendment. And they are talking about amendments. You no, know, see, this, this is clearly mentioned, and so two, three times you pay see his ask the question, you know, on amendments only. For example, you know, there was a question whether, whether the, you know, I think it was in 2000, yeah, 2008, CSE 2018. This question was there. Now, whether the reservation for uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribe can be applied in minority institutions, minority education institutes. This is a very, you know, uh, you know, very good question. To, you know, uh, for that you have to have the understanding of 93 Constitution Amendment Act. Then, uh, you know, uh, that Article 29, 30, then Article 15, right? So that we will discuss. But just to give you an example, significant provisions, provisions basic structure, Kishun and Bharti, you know, we will see what is the basic structure. There is a big debate on that. Then, function and responsibility of the union and states. You know, what are the responsibilities of union and state? And now, you know, their responsibility to, you know, local panchayas as well. You know, that, uh, that we, this is a very interesting uh, topic. We'll study issues and challenging pertaining to the federalist structure. Now, federalism, right? Uh, now, I, if you can, one can say this is the biggest challenge, you know, how to ha harmonize, you know, uh, relation between states and, uh, we should not call it center, we should call it union. You know, even in our lecture, we will develop the habit of calling union. Because when you say union, when you say center, it's, you know, different. Union means, it, it, center means something, you know, authoritative. Union means something accommodative. 
right? Oh, so similar, we will see uh, devolution of power and finances up to local. See, now very, very important local levels and challenges. Article 243G, Article 243G, G and W, right? What the Financial Commission, Finance Commission report says. Okay, Punchi Commission has, you know, and devoted a chapter on this. Uh, not only Punchis, all the uh, commission like Sarkaria, Punchi, right? Those are mainly for the center state relation. Okay. Uh, even the uh, National Constitution Review Commission, Dr. Sawad Kashyap has mentioned. So, this is what it is. Dispute mechanism institution. Comparison of Indian Constitution is with that of other countries. Now, if you read that book, uh, NCRT book, Constitution at Work, you know, uh, I, I think that book, book has a very, you know, they have dealt with this topic very sincerely. You know, uh, if, if uh, UPSC has asked a question, you know, they, they, they asked us to compare the Constitution of uh, India and uh, US. And uh, it is very, you know, it is hopeful that somewhere, sometime in the future, they will ask us to compare the, you know, second, the second most important is UK, United Kingdom. Okay, so that question is expected anytime in the future. Okay, then parliament and state legislature. Okay, structure, functioning, conduct. Okay, now, you know, uh, now to, there are topics like this. For example, this see this one. Salient feature uh, representation of uh, people like the 1951, right? Now, what you have to do, you have to read this act. You know, although it's, you know, it's, I think, uh, 60, 70 pages act, but, you know, reading that act and then there is a naval, sorry, law commission uh, report uh, on electoral reforms. If you can, you know, uh, synergize reading of, you know, your two pager on this act with that law commission report, you know, then I, 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 I you know, feel that you would be able to write a very good answer in the PC. So law commission report on electoral electoral reform. No. Then appointment of, uh, so, you know, there are topics like this, there, as we'll go into the, uh, we, will, uh, we, will, we will discuss in, the, in detail. This we have already covered, poverty and hunger, issues relating to, so now see, this is, uh, this is not just a topic. Uh, you know, uh, in the, from this topic, you can, you know, you may expect uh, at least uh, two or three questions in one uh, one paper. So you have to, you know, very cautious. Uh, uh, this topic is more important, you know, which is less important like that. For example, this is you know, one of the most important topics, like constitution. Constitution. Similarly, role of civil society in democracy. You know, every year they ask. Then there is the talking about international relation. International relation is, you know, is a little bit tricky to prepare, but uh, what is the, you know, what my understanding is best way to, uh, you know, develop international relation is what you can do on Ministry of External Affairs website. You know, there is a, you know, uh, uh, PDF available on India's, you know, India's relation with every other country. You know, it's a write-up and uh, diplomats write that. For example, India-Pakistan relation, India-Nepal. So, you know, for SARC countries, SARC and important countries like USA, like USA, UK, Russia, and Israel, you know, like countries like this, you must read that right up and, you know, make a, you know, one pager on that. Now this covers your static part, not only static, but also current because they updated every year. This, you know, this, uh, and it is a very holistic, historical uh, document, you know, from the beginning, how our relation evolved. And not only, uh, and one more important thing, when you write like this, that reflect that you have, you know, uh, you have adopted the writing of a diplomat and, and, and that will pay in UPC. So uh, uh, what I want to say, read this write up, I know, download the write up, uh, make it to one pager and whatever is going in current, so again, preparing IR from a newspaper, you know, I, I, I don't think is a very good proposition. But uh, if you see, you know, something is missing here and there, there is a book by, you know, uh, Rajiv Sikri book, you know, he was a former diplomat. And it's a, called a classic, you know, you can take, you know, some part from here and there. And uh, 
and for uh, you know if you want to add something current use pib document that is the newspaper this is what it is so just to say it again first thing all your uh, write ups important write ups then just read rajiv chakri if you have time if you don't have time directly go to pib right you know whatever happened in the last one and a half year that should be in a notes and i think that is sufficient so this is what is uh, no i have not discussed gs to slowly but uh, we will discuss this as we proceed the lecture now just to tell you know for the first part that constitution and all uh, what is important my understanding is this reading constitution bare act is very very important why is uh, see how the you know aspirant start their preparation they start their preparation with lakshmi kant you know some even say that it's the bible of for you preparation now you know why one has to think why lakshmi kant is very popular and not constitution is popular you know if you see you know everybody reading why you know not everybody carries was kashyap or lakshmi you know why lakshmi kant? see because the, we in our you know in our daily life or you know we do not use the language of constitution so our mind is not tuned or conditioned to that kind of language you know you know we are con- we are tuned to language of lakshmi kant lakshmi kant what they have done you know they have kind of a make it's a notes on constitution but again you know if you are looking for you know some good marks in uh, and understanding so gradually you know within one or two month your mind should you know you should uh, directly come to bear act and so what i will say lakshmi kant you can for one or one or two reading just quickly read it understand what is in the constitution then this is the way i classify books reading political theory political theory book is there you know uh, uh, this is very very important it has topics like secularism nationalism rights you know uh, you know that that is i think that is a very good book it, that, that book is for as the topic for social justice you know uh, the, reading this book is very very book constitution at one okay these two ncert are very very important you know it's hardly uh, i think 120 page each you should quickly uh, read these two books not only read make the notes now this is one important thing now everybody say you know for, when you first time read a, a book you know notes page is difficult no doubt about that so what i what i suggest okay for example you are reading political theory there are seven eight chapters so for example uh, there is a chapter on rights so what you do when you read it make notes you know uh, you know maybe uh, write, uh, bring down you know bring that chapter into 100 or 150 words and when you revise it you know after maybe one or two months you will revise this political theory book then second time also you again read political theory you new know, book after that after two readings then you can you know rely on your notes completely so but first time don't not only read uh, you know first time if you only read and do not make note uh, you know i think it's not uh, you know optimum utilization of time first time also when you read make notes okay so these two books are very very important constitution at work and i, th- I think you already know after that uh, you know In, in fact i can say to write any question of mains these books are sufficient uh, but you know there is some you know uh, some analysis you know so what you can do you can choose any one swas kashyap book is there our constitution you know our constitution by swas kashyap it's a very good book you know uh, dr swas kashyap was uh, uh, lok sabha secretary for 30 years you no know, the way he has written you know uh, that that is uh, that is the way you have to write in mains our constitution or some people did the divasu i am not i have not gone through the divasu so i cannot comment much on that okay but our constitution uh, by dr subhas kashyap it is a book perfect for mains our constitution plus our parliament our parliament and our political theory there are three books okay but reading our constitution is important so this and our that constitution bear act now you will say you know there are so many books but again see these two ncert will go you know very quickly political theory and constitution at work constitution at work then uh, our constitution uh, our constitution by swakashyam and 
after reading this two books, you must have been at ready because, in fact, I, I, I will say you know download that PDF, keep it in, always in a table, and keep it for you know. See, even if you get selected, you know, just you know, uh, think that when I will get selected, I will keep this copy with me. You know, you uh, you know it, it shows your you know even this statement shows your in a state of the mind that you are presuming that you will get selected and you will use this copy to you know when you will become bureaucrat so if you see you know senior bureaucrats earlier you know they have their they, you know they do the same way you know they, they use the same copy of the constitution uh, but with they had during their preparation as in this you know when they, they were in services as well so this is what i have to say i think uh, you are uh, okay with the resources now you know, now we, we will see what, what is Bayer Act and Constitution, and we will discuss it. Now, this is your Bayer Act. You know, you can download it from the, you know, internet. Uh, Ministry of Legislative Department, you know, Ministry of Law and Justice, they publish it in with amendments, and this one is updated till first of April two thousand nineteen. So, you know, reading Bayer Act, feeling it, you know, that is more important. So let us see, you know, what our constitution is. For example, you know, just see this one. If you have to write in a UPSC, you have to write, you know, article, so use this abbreviation. Okay. I think uh, all these you will not, you will not require to use, but article you have to write many times. So, you know, you, some people use like this, you know, AT. I, I don't think uh, what, what is the sense of this? You know, use what the constitution use. Okay. Now you know. Now first we will go through the you know, index. Um, you know, my under my, my idea is you know first to familiarize you with the uh, constitution, and then gradually we will enter into its analysis in the main part. So let's see. You know, the, you know first the preamble, and then then the, you know their parts, their articles. Okay. Let's see. The, you know. You know. Then this is our part four is DPSP. Then, uh, you know, fundamental duties, article 51A uh, came by the, you know, 1976. Okay. Chapter one, executive, chapter two, parliament. Okay. Then uh, there is a, you know, the, the chapters like this. Okay. Then, the, you know, this chapter got added. You know, now you see, you have to feel, you know, where the municipal cooperative society chapter is coming. You know, this shows the intent of constitution. And why I say the reading direct is important. You know, if you remember that Kodavaman case, don't worry, you know, Kodavaman case is very important Supreme Court justice, mainly related to issues related to, you know, what is going in Naxalite areas, uh, mainly. Left. We should not use the word Naxalite, we should use the word left wing extremism so there you know mainly you know forest land encroachment on forest land that is what they say what the supreme court say dictionary meaning of forest you know analysis all those things what, but what is the dictionary meaning similarly you know they are you know even dd versus you know, they have you know given commentary on constitution but you as a person who did what is written in the constitution you as a person should feel you know what was the intent of uh, our constitution fathers. So you can say, okay, see, cooperative society is, you know, is close to, uh, you know, after, after Panchayat chapter. So there is a meaning in this. You know, similarly, Article 355 comes just before Art Article 356. 356 is, you know, you know, president rule. And Article 355, you know, imposes duty upon uh, union for states. So now, you know, there is a meaning why you know article 356 was put you know inserted immediately after article 355 don't worry you know we will discuss all the thing but my idea was you to familiarize the intent of uh, our constitution father now you know the finance is there okay now you know, the trivial action is 
okay so this this article i was talking about duty of union to protect state against external aggression and internal you know the, the no on article 355 you know a lot of commentary has been given by punchi commission sarkari commission also devoted one chapter okay but what they say okay what is the you know why article 355 what you know what center center does you know they will send their armed forces if there is some disturbance in you know in any state even without the consent of states you know uh, to say in you know to put it a front this is the matter but so what the center says or the you know uh, i'm using word here center not union because uh, because it shows authority so what the center says uh, that uh, article 355 puts an obligation on us to protect the state against external aggression but again you know the what is duty here it should you know if there is you know if the state ask you know, the, the intent of the constitution father was to protect the state so the word duty is very very important similarly see article 356 is you know uh, so, so supreme court has mentioned you know used unnecessary many times okay now you can say like this the article 356 was mentioned under the emergency provisions so emergency does not you know arise every day so simply you know this is the we can right see the intent of our constitution father was to put it was that they inserted article 356 under the emergency provision part so this means implementation of uh, you know article 356 in state has to be done only when you know when there emergency you know due to this supreme court said that when the administrative machinery fails sorry when the constitution machinery fails not just administrative machinery uh, you know don't worry we, we will discuss all these things then we will discuss okay now you know see now what is the 22 there are 22 uh, parts there are schedules you know schedules like uh, you know that 12 schedules total okay total 12 schedule you have seen okay then uh, 11th and 12th schedule uh, got in third letter okay then uh, you know there should be like you know uh, seventh schedule mentioned you know list 1 2 3 okay okay then a third schedule is all about oath and forms of oath or affirmation first schedule mentioned the you know first schedule mentioned states union territories second schedule you know provisions you know how much says the provisions to you know governor president judges supreme court and cag you know you have to you know how much said so what it says mainly that their salary and pension should go from the consolidated fund of india okay charge upon the consolidated fund of india See, here you have to mention you know understand you know it is for cag not for you know upsc chairman or the chief election commissioner no only for cag it charges salary is charged directly from the consolidated fund of india it show you know kind of uh, you know importance our constitution father gave to this post even dr ambedkar said that cag is the most important office under our constitution Oh, so this is what so now you know then there are things like schedule okay and uh, then you know once the upsc ask question why you know uh, fifth and sixth schedule you know why what they say that you know uh, uh, development is going you know fine in sixth schedule and uh, yeah, but in fifth schedule there is trouble you know because the fifth schedule has not been very very successful but sixth schedule you know implementation of sixth schedule has been successful this was the intent so again th there is a long history about it that we will discuss okay now you know using uh, right language is very important you can say for example uh, let let me you know give you an example for example in upsc you write think like government of india sorry uh, government of india yes should implement pesa you know pesa you know uh, panchayat extension in schedule areas 1996 in both fifth schedule and sixth schedule areas so what the professor will think you know ki isko pata nahi hai yani his understanding is not good but if you write something like that you know go, uh, pesa panchayat should be you know uh, you know introduced in fifth and sixth schedule areas prudently 
Now, you know, you have just used the word prudent, but you know, it's a long history. For example, introducing PESA in Shiridu area, you know, very, very, uh, I will say, you know, uh, very, very tricky affair. Uh, there is a, a special report in second ARC. I think it's an 11th or 13th report, something like that. You, local governance, okay. So you see that report. They, you know, in our constitution also, they mentioned it clearly that extension of panchayat can happen in, uh, you know, in uh, scheduled areas. But again, in scheduled area, you know, you know, uh, there are councils, district council, there are regional councils, there are, then there is, you know, office of governance. So, you know, it's like a, what I call a you know, chakra view. You know, the district council is there, regional council is there, right? Then governor office is there, and then, you know, the state machine is already there. And here you want to introduce panchayat. Now see, you know, it's not you know, just in, in today. So it, you have to have understanding of all this. You know, how, what are the conflict between governor and district council? How district council and regional council, you know, have conflict among themselves? How, you know, why states are, you know, not devolving powers to district council, regional council? How their district council of six and six states are different? So, you know, your every statement in UPSC may should reflect your understanding. You know, and, uh, you know, again, 73rd and 74th Constitution Amendment are very, very important that uh, we will devote. So, so I've just given you an example like this. Okay. So now, you know, uh, we have to go through the you know, all articles. Uh, now, it's, you see, uh, once this UPSC asked this question, now this is a part 11 and it's a temporary and transactional special provision, Article 370. Now, you know, it's another story different for Article 370. But if see here, what the chapter says, temporary, transitional, and special provision, and under it is Article 370. Now, you know, just putting it under temporary and transitional, it shows the intent of our constitution fathers. Why they, you know, the uh, provision related to GNK were uh, put in a part with naming, Temporary transitional special power. Okay. Okay. Now, you know, the, the, you know that the chapters on uh, official language, emergency provision is there, right? Okay. Now, what I will do, now, tribunal chapter is very important. Tribunal is in your syllabus, and, uh, you know, when you make a two pager on tribunal, first thing you must read is these two articles. And then there is a law commission report, law commission report on tribunal. If you can, you know, read that report and bring it to three page, I think it's done. You know, nothing else to require to, you know, read. And for uh, any question of UPSC related to tribunal and uh, avoid reading newspaper, you know, commenting on tribunal on that, not much worth. Okay, now, what I will do, we will just, you know, we will see some of the articles. Okay, we will see some articles. Let's see, you know, how they have named our constitution father named. Uh, now, let's see, you know, article one, how they start. Uh, name and territory of the union. Admission or establishment of new states, article two. Okay, uh, two A has been omitted. Formation, see, uh, when they omit uh, uh, any article, you know, uh, you know, when any article new inserted or, you know, omitted, you mention it. Okay, then citizenship, you know, chapter, chapter next chapter is on citizenship. Now, you know, the, the controversy is going on citizenship amendment act. Now, you know, as a bureaucrat, as a, you know, UPSC aspirant, you should not uh, delve into that, uh, you know, what is going in newspaper, hot stuff, Jenny and all that. Thing. You, you must, if you say something like that, you know, Constitution Amendment, uh, uh, sorry, Citizenship Amendment Act, okay, should, you know, uh, should uh, harmonize with what is written in our Article 11. Now, you know, this shows an understanding. The Parliament has the power to regulate the right of citizenship by law. Okay. So, so you can say, you know, 
so you know, there is nothing wrong here if you parliament is regulating there is nothing so you know you can say uh, citizenship amendment act should harmonize with article 11 as well as the values enshrined in our constitution such as preamble so you know both side you have uh, explored so parliament can regulate but again within the you know basic structure of our constitution this is the way you can write so you know there is a full chapter uh, on citizenship citizenship at the commencement of the constitution uh, rights of citizenship of certain person who have migrated to india from pakistan you know certain migrants to pakistan you know, like this you, you remember you know uh, there was so many millions of people migrated during partition uh, there is a book the other uh, the other side of silence you know uh, it's a book on partition and there is a uh, poem partition written by w h jordan if you get time please read it and uh, you know that, that that you know this book and this poem reflects you know that whoever is written it you know they have the full understanding of uh, our constitution what what was happening in 1947 okay now next is fundamental right now you know reading fundamental right from where act uh, and uh, you know is very very important i think dpsp and fundamental right and uh, 73rd that uh, chapter related to panchayat and uh, municipal that should be read from here only okay now to see you know how our fundamental rights are divided yeah general you know definition they for mentioned definition you know we, for example you know that, that is many other state they defined the state then article 13 is very very see the law inconsistent with or in derogation to the fundamental right any any law you make which is inconsistent with fundamental right will be null and void then they, they are talking about the right to equality right to equality right to freedom article 14 very very important equality before law epl evl equal protection of law equality before law like that then right to freedom see right to freedom you know very important see now this you know freedom of press is there if you read our constitution there is no mention of freedom of press in our constitution but you can say that under article 19a you know we can drive that freedom of press okay now cop property self can give a fundamental right article 19c copyright is very very important now you can say you know article under article 19c our copyright is you know have a fundamental right to study copyright is a fundamental right so what it means for example even if government is supporting financially supporting cooperatives they should not you know uh, 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 members or board members there because establishing cooperative is a fundamental right now see even if you know god is giving financial support then also uh, they should not have any power to so why you know why because it's a fundamental right if uh, you know uh, we will discuss it more article 21 very very important 2021 so this is the way you know article 21a 86 constitution amendment act that we have already discussed okay culture see culture and education right now see this is very very important now see what is happening here they talk about right of minorities to establish an administered education institution you know on this article you know there was a supreme court judgment on tma pi case then kerala education bill a long history but you know this is one thing in the heading they have not mentioned culture and educational right of minorities they only mentioned culture and education rights but in article 30 they have mentioned our rights of minority to establish and and mr when you read article 292 article 292 and article 30 they are conflicting what is the conflict in article 20 29 to say you know, no person should be denied you know admission on the basis of so and so but article 30 you know provides right to, to minority to establish and so now there is a kind of a conflict now how this conflict will go you know uh, for that you know our judiciary is there so you know uh, uh, we, we, I, i don't want to you know bombard you with so many information but again we are, this is very important see what is what uh, you know if act is just like an you know act or constitution is just like an skeleton the flesh and blood is you know uh, that interpretation flesh and blood is put by the judiciary or intellectual you know they interpret it and then you know so that that is what it is 
OK. Now, you know, uh, this is there. Now, Article 32, most important article, Dr. Ambedkar called it in our constitution. If you know any breach of uh, any article, you can go directly, you know, remedies for information of. Similarly, DPSP, you know, uh, very, very important. You know, equal justice is there, Pro promotion of cooperative. This is a prelims question, you know, uh, and you know, prelims question, UPSC asked, you know, when uh, promo promotion of cooperative in which year it came. Okay, so, like, so, Now, you know, Article 50, you know, separation of judiciary and executive, you know, you know, it should be there, you know, separation of, uh, you know, there is not a hard course and separation, otherwise why the tribunal will be there. But uh, it should be, you know, separation of judiciary and executive, you know, is uh, what our uh, constitution father in envisioned. Similarly, promotion of international peace and security under Article 51. Okay, so, so, chapters like this, uh, what uh, we will do, uh, this you know, in 2000, uh, uh, I think 2019, UPSC asked question on Attorney General, you know, mains question. So, you know, reading this uh, article is very, very important. Now you have to understand why Attorney General at, under Article 6, uh, Constitution Father kept, with, you know, introduced with, you know, Council of Ministers. You know, why, you know, after Council of Ministers, Attorney General uh, article came. Okay. So this is what you know. I think now you're a little bit familiarized. I mean, article and all this. What I will do now? Before first we, you know, first we will go through. Uh, no, before we go to preamble, what I will do? Uh, I, I I will read a, you know a paragraph by Doctor Savas Kashyap. Now you have to feel you know a, a person. Who has invested almost 50, 60 years of his life, you know, uh, in our in, in, in matters related to constitution? Who was in parliament for the 50, 60 years, is sitting in Lok Sabha, observing bureaucrats, parliament, and you know how he writes about about our constitution, you know. So I will read that passage first, and then we will go through this constitution. So this is the book I was talking about. Uh, this book you should refer our constitution. It's an MBT National Book Test book. Yeah. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, let's see, you know, how, how Dr. Savat Kashyap, you know, he in introduced, uh, you know, what he says about the constitution. Let's see what he says. Constitution of a country lays down the basic structure of the political system under which its people are to be governed. You know, it's a basic structure. No, basic structure, again, again is a term, you know. Basic structure of the political system and you know, under which people are to go. It established the main organs of the state, the legislature, executive, and judiciary. You know, writing in, in, in this order is important. Don't write, you know, exec, executive, judiciary, or legislature first, then executive, and judiciary. Define their powers, demarcate their responsibility, and regulate their relationship with each other and with the people. Now see, responsibility and power, you know, how these two words, you know, are adjacent. So what, you know, similarly in, in your writing also, Gandhi said, you know, uh, the source of power is duty. Similarly, you know, same thing. Whenever you mention about power, also always mention about responsibility. In a democracy, sovereignty vests in the people. Now see, you know, this is, now how he writes, sovereign is not our parliament or judiciary or something. Who is sovereign? Sovereign is people. Now this is the understanding. If you write a statement like this, you know, it shows understanding. In a democracy, sovereignty vests in people, and ideally the people govern themselves. But with the growing complexities of administration and the size of the national states, direct democracy is no more feasible. In the modern is repetitive democracy. Now, see, now this repetitive democracy is again, you know, uh, there is meaning of this word, repetitive democracy. You know, uh, what it means, you know, people will elect the repetitive, okay. Uh, now, if you say, you know, we should uh, transform our democracy from repetitive to participatory, you know, more involvement of people, you know, this, this shows understanding. Second, RC has mentioned this idea many times, you know, moving India from repetitive democracy to participatory. 
because you know representative democracy is fine you know but again the the problem is that you know only the majority rules you know because due to the mainly that a first past the post system that we will discuss you know uh, it is not proportional representation uh, in uh, you know election to mps and mlas so that's the problem so what is the need you know all section of the society should participate you know panchayats municipals that's why moving india from representative democracy to participatory tra transform transactional to transformation okay people exercise their inalienable rights to decide how and why whom they should be governed that means it's simply election the very first and the most fundamental application of their sovereignty by the people is in giving to themselves a constitution which outlines the ground rule under which certain powers are transferred to different organs of the state and are to be exercised you know constitution is giving power to people in a federal polity constitution you know federal polity you know, now the basic meaning is the word if you want to say federal polity you know you know relationship between state and union Const in a federal polity constitution inter alia you know inter alia means among other things de delineates delimits and distributes powers between the organs of the so now see he used three words in conjunction delineates and delimits and distributes yeah, i'm very sure you know when your as your answer writing will evolve you will also adopt this writing style you know uh, delineates the delimits and distributes power between the organs of the state at federal or union level on the one hand and those at the level of the state provinces or the unit on the other okay you know federal both at both level between union state as well as the state and panchayats the constitution of a country may also be described as if its foundational law which ordains the fundamentals of its polity and on the altar of which all other laws and all other laws and executive acts of the state are to be tested for their validity and legitimacy see very very important how much importance is they, they have given to constitution the constitution of a country may also be described as its foundational law what is constitution of a foundational law which ordains the fundamentals of its Polity, fundamentals of our polity. What, what is the fundamental? You know, for example, means the preamble is the fundamental of our polity. You know, fundamental rights, DPSP, elections. You know, relations between the federal structure, fundamentals of its polity, and on the altar of which all other laws and executive acts of the state are to be tested for their validity and legitimacy. For example, you know, in the Section sixty six A of uh, Companies Act. This was revoked by you know, Supreme Court. You know, like many other acts. You know, so what? What uh, Supreme Court? You know, Supreme Court quoted many articles from the Constitution that it is against the spirit of these articles. So uh, this is not that Supreme Court is supreme. What is what is supreme? People are supreme, and people have Constitution. That's why anything you know, any act you may, you know, any legislature make, you know, that has to be tested on the altar of Constitution. for their validity and legitimacy very very important every constitution represent the vision and values of its founding father see the, 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 the statesman like this you have to write in essay every constitution represent the vision and values of its founding father and it based on the social political and economic ethos and faith and aspiration of the people it is wrong to regard a country's constitution as a mere inner document for constitution it is not only what is written in the text of the constitution constitution is a living organism see how many times is living organism even the second year has used right and your ncert constitution at work they have also used this thing constitution is living organism or functioning keeps constant constant you know how it evolved 70th you know chapter related to panchayat municipal cooperatives you know giving you know uh, introducing article 39a 43b ab right then you know uh, controversy related to uh, article 31 uh, you know 31 abc you know they were the, so you know this this shows that we are evolving right okay 
Every constitution gets meaning and content only from the manner in which and the people by whom it is operated, the effects it acquire and from how it is interpreted by courts of the land and the conventions and the practices that grow around it in the actual process of it working. Now see, you mentioned our constitution, but not, not, not a single fact, only ideas. This shows, you know, uh, uh, just so you have to imagine, you know, the person who has been, you know, uh, worked with our constitution and it's functioning for 50, 60 years. This is the way he starts, uh, uh, you know, writes about our constitution. You know, he's talking about vision, values, political system, right? Testing uh, acts of the state for their validity and legitimacy on the altar of constitution. So all this. Now, uh, we, you know, what we will do, uh, this is what, you know, this also I want to discuss with you. Uh, uh, we will read uh, these two. Understanding constitutionalism is also important. Constitution is fine, but what is constitutionalism? Okay, so first constitution law. What it say? Constitution law would normally cover and connote the fundamental law of the land as contained in the provisions of the constitution. Okay. More particularly, it is concerned with the basic features of the framework of the distribution of the power between the organ of the state and between the union and unit. However, modern constitution law, especially in free representative democracy, lay the greatest emphasis on fundamental human rights. Now see, you know, distribution of power, all those things is fine, but now more important is the fundamental human rights, relationship and the relationship between the individual citizens and the state. You know, even United Nations, you know, uh, the human rights chapter we will read it later. That one also. You know, they are talking about the you know human rights is very very important. Also, the sources of constitution law include not only the text of the constitution, not only the text of the constitution, but also constitution case law, conventions. You know, and the number of statutes enacted under certain constitution provisions. See what what about conventions? For example. Uh, you can say like this, for example, dharma in ancient ancient Indian polity, dharma governed, you know, king. You know, even the you know there was you know there was no divine right to king. Divine right means it is not any something king can do anything. Even you know the power of cartels you say you know king was governed morally, you know, by dharma. So for GS4, before you're writing a statement like this is important. And uh, Artha Sastra, you know, uh, uh, there is a commentary on Artha Sastra. No, not commentary, but a chapter uh, Dr. Kavarkar Shiva has written on Artha Sastra. And I think uh, from that you can use point in GS4. Now coming to constitutionalism. The, con the concept of constitutionalism is that of a polity governed by or under a constitution that ordained is essentially limited government and rule of law as opposed to arbitrary authoritarian or totalitarian law. You know, polity governed by or under a constitution that ordains essentially limited government and rule of law. See, rule of law, very, very important. You know, limited government and no totalism. That, that, that is, you know, that is the meaning of constitutionalism. Okay, what did it say? Constitution government, therefore, should necessarily be a democratic government. So the, this Indian constitution government is something even more than democ de democratic government. You know, you can say like this, you know, uh, democratic government is a part of, you know, constitution government. For example, uh, okay, if I get in the GS paper four, if I once ask, Good governance, different between governance, good governance, and ethical governance. You know, they took to three levels governance, uh, good governance, and ethical governance. In National Constitution Review uh, Report, talked about constitutional governance. I have a between here, two, but there is a term also like constitution governance. Similarly, constitution government, 
you know, constitution government is something more than democratic government. Democracy can be, you know, first pass up. Democracy, you know, may also result into the, you know, rule by majority. But th that is not the purpose of whatever constitution of others are. Also, and next thing. Also, constitutionalism is natural concomitant of a written constitution in as much as the written constitution is bound to under written constitution can only be limited government. So, you know, uh, constitutionally means there has to be have a written constitution. Okay. Which delimit the power of uh, states. But it is certainly conceivable that some countries, there have been many examples, may have written constitution which are not really democratic. Oh, now this is tricky. You know, if, uh, uh, you know, uh, how to say it, you know, some, you know, again, media, media may uh, skew our vision. But again, you know, there are some countries in Africa, in Middle East, you know, where they, are, they have written constitution, but constitutionalism is missing there. So what, you know, what it can be said, it can be said that they have constitution, but not constitutional. So this means functioning as per the ethos values of constitution is constitutional. Okay. So now, you know, we have devoted some time here, if I have 10 minutes. But okay, now, try to, you know, what can die. You can see it structure, okay, or your idea, your idea should be that uh, you know always and always have that. Uh, uh, you know, your vision, should, uh, you have to make that two pages. That is very, very, now, you know, before we start discussing uh, constitution, I want to show you, you know, this book, Indian constitution, very, very important book, you know, uh, you should read it at least two times. Now, you know, uh, now you have to understand, you know, what our, you know, what, uh, you know, uh, professors, you know, lawyers, or, you know, they want, you know, children, of India to know uh, about constitution, not to learn for UPC and you know, any other thing. So how they have divided the chapter? First, they are talking about constitution, why and how. Rights in the constitution, in the constitution. Election, executive, you know, see, rights, uh, election, even the ordering of the chapter, you know, it tells you something. Executive, legislature, judiciary, local government, very, very important. Constitution as a living document, you know, it is evolving. The philosophy of the constitution. I, I, I will say, you know, read this chapter, you know, very, very important chapter. Okay. So uh, what I will do, uh, my, my main focus will be on the reading uh, Bear Act. But, you know, in the main, uh, once in a while, I will keep on referring one or two paragraphs from these books too. But uh, you have to read this, both. Political theory, political theory book, and this book. You have to make, make read it, and uh, you know, try to bring it, uh, say, in uh, one thousand word each. You know, in the maybe in the first iteration, I think uh, one thousand to one thousand five hundred words. Try to bring this anxiety. Let's see, you know, uh, let's see. Okay, now let's see philosophy of the constitution. Okay. What you know, uh, I will not read you know full, but uh, maybe one or two paragraphs you will see, and then we will move into reading of our bear act. Okay, okay.
or some pages are missing or something like that. I think some page. Okay, I will see. Okay, you know, the main main thing is that you know the philosophy. You know, is in your preamble. I think some pages. Okay, yes, it is there. Okay, now, now what we'll do? Uh, we we will see something you know like like uh, federalism. You know what this three seventy one. You know Article three seventy one to H. You know is mainly for North East. By introducing the articles concerning Jammu and Kashmir Article three seventy. And the North East Article three seventy one, the Indian Constitution anticipates the very important concept of asymmetric federalism. Now, this is the keyword you have to put in your notes: asymmetric federalism. You know, not symmetric, asymmetric. Now, what is asymmetric federalism? This NCRT chapter book has already explained in in previous chapter. For example, what they are saying, we have seen in the chapter. In the constitution, they have created a strong central government. You know how how can you say it is a strong? If you say, list one, you know, that is to center union. So list two is there, concurrently then and the residuary power. You know, residuary power remains with center. But if you recall, in Article, you know, Government of India Act 1919 and both. Uh, Government of India Act 1935, residuary power. Government of India, you know, Act 1935, residuary power with states, not with you know, uh, with center. But I, when you know we are adopted, we uh, give residuary power to center again. Article, you know, Article 356, you know, chapter related to uh, you know emergency provisions. So you know there are many things we say is a strong central government. But despite this unitary bias of the Indian constitution, there are important constitutionally embedded differences between the legal status and prerogative of different subunits within the same federation. Now see how important it is. See what they're saying. But despite the unitary bias, you know, that center, center is strong, you know, there are important constitutionally embedded differences between the legal status and prerogatives of different subunits within the same federation. That's why they say asymmetric. You know, because you know, chapters say the, the provisions related to Northeast and JNK, you know, different from you know, for example, uh, provisions related to Rajasthan or you know, Bimaru state, okay, like that. Bimaru again is a, a important word, Bimaru, right? Bihar. It, it, it it's not a funny word you know it's I mean used in many government documents yeah you know bihar madhya pradesh rajasthan uttar pradesh like that okay unlike the constitution symmetry of american federalism um, see what is in america america states made the center if you, you know uh, it's a very you know uh, if you uh, if i am not mistaken till 1860 they used to say the United States of America are, you know, before 1860. This was the, you know, the language used in, you know, many novels or, you know, constitution documents, like legal document. United States of America are, but after 19, 1860, United States of America is. Now see, you know, intent is changing. You know, before that, you know, they used to think that all the states have come together and uh, they have established uh, American federalism. Okay, so what they say, unlike the constitution symmetry of American federalism, Indian federalism has been constitutionally asymmetric to meet the specific needs and requirement of some subunits. It was always It, it was always part. Just a minute.
Start. Okay. Okay, now it's page, page, page number is something like that. Okay. Part of the original design to have a unique relationship with them or to give them a special status. Okay. For example, now you know how this is very you know controversial. You have to see you know how the NCRT right or GNK. For example, the accession of GNK to the Indian Union was based on a commitment to safeguard its autonomy under Article. 370 of the constitution. This is the line you have to use. You, you can see. You know the accession of GNK to the Indian Union was to safeguard it out of article where the, the Raja Hari Singh signed. Yeah, you know, that, that is the main that was the main intent of it, you know. Commitment to safeguard its autonomy. This is the only state that is governed by its own constitution. Similarly, under Article 371A, the privilege of a special status was also according to the North State of Nagaland. You know, now you have to think, you know, why this came immediately in 1962, a special status for Nagaland. You know, why immediately after Chinese invasion? You know, there is a long history, you know, as you, you know, you will understand, you know, okay, here Chinese invasion happened. There, you know, so many changes come in Article 371. You know, the pressure was coming, you know, to uh, keep India, you know, united. This article not only confers, then what they say, then this article not only confers validity on pre existing laws with Nagaland, but also protects local identity through restriction on migration. Now, you know, this is a big thing, you know, uh, Nagalingam land, you know, the main thing. Not everybody can migrate it. They were, you know, uh, uh, th that we will discuss later. Many other states too are beneficiary of such a special provisions. According to the Indian constitution, then there is nothing bad about this differential treatment. Okay. Although the constitution did not originally envisage this, India is now a multilingual federation. Now you can use the word like this. Multilingual federation. Okay. Asymmetric federation. Each major linguistic group is politically recognized and all are treated as equal. You know, for example, there's a question like that. You know, India is a you know, uh, cultural unit, you know, the assimilation of cultural unit rather than political unit. So each major linguistic group is politically recognized and all are treated as equal. If, if you remember, first state, Andhra, Andhra was also, you know, linguistic basis, the history of. Committee Jawalan, the JVP committee, Fajal Ali committee, right? In 1956. We will discuss all this, you know. I don't want to bombard you with information. Okay. Thus, the democratic and linguistic federalism of India has managed to combine claims. Okay, now see that, 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 that this how important this line is. Isn't it, when you read it first time, you know, you may miss things like that. But after two, three readings, you will understand the meaning of what they say. Thus, the democratic and linguistic federalism of India has managed to combine claims to unity with claims to cultural recognition. Now this shows unity in diversity. You know, has managed to combine claims to unity with claims to cultural recognition. You know, both, you know, India, you know, Tamil, but as well Indian, Punjabi as well as Indian. Okay. A very robust political arena exists that allows for the play of multiple identities, multiple identities that complement one another. Okay, right. For example, uh, uh, you know, there is a protection of uh, minorities, right? Now, minority is, uh, now suppose there is, you know, uh, say Tamil is staying in, uh, say, Bengal. Okay, uh, West Bengal, uh, now they call it Bangla, right? So, uh, you know, is that a Tamil staying in uh, West Bengal is a minority or not? Uh, this is a question, you know, uh, just think about it. And I'm sure, you know, by the time we have discussed some, uh, some part of the constitution, you, you will know the answer. Okay. So I have discussed, you know, uh, two paragraphs we have from this uh, the book. Okay. 
and now like this you know uh, what we will do we will go through the back uh, and uh, you know one in a while we will keep on coming to uh, political theory uh, constitution and work and so our question book okay so Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, uh, what we will do? Article, you know, uh, you know, uh, the article three ninety five articles in Constitution. And one more thing, number of article has not changed. You know, do you see here? You know, article might get repealed, or some article you know might get in, inserted. For example, nine, nine four, three ninety 
थ्री नाइनटी फोर ए आर्टिकल फोर्टी थ्री बी ए थर्टी नाइन ए समथिंग लाइक दैट बट नंबर ऑफ आर्टिकल हैज कॉन्स्टेंट सो फर्स्ट वी विल गो थ्रू प्रेम्बल विल सी यू नो वॉट द प्रेम्बल ऑफ अवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज एंड दिस इज वॉट यू नो रीडिंग now there have been a you know controversy whether preamble is the part of a constitution or not okay now for reading this uh, preamble is very important okay no let's see we the people of india we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic now these not only the order of these words But the meaning of this is very, very important. See, in the means, there is a question: What are the adjective of word "republic" in our preamble? Now, see, this is just a ten, I think, ten, fifteen marks question. Now, so there, what you are expected to do, you know, these are the adjective, right? Sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic are the you know that uh, adjectives of our you know of the word "republic," and you have to you know write two to three three lines on each and done. So, we the people of uh, what it says we the people of india have solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizen justice you know justice again is you know big theory john rawls you know amartya sen has given right then for, see what the what the see for the first what is the first word after justice social is more important than political and economic and political you know even your affirmative uh, reservations you know that is based on social justice okay your forest right act all these are you know embodiments of social justice mandega okay then liberty of thought you know see thought expression belief faith and worship this is meaning you know in each and every word equality of status and of opportunity not only of status but opportunity you know and to promote among them all fraternity fraternity for assuring the dignity of the individual you know in fact if you can say the purpose of our constitution is to ensure the dignity of the individual you know very right you know very very you know forceful and uh, you know uh, grammatically correct statement you know assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation you know wherever you know uh, you know they were introduced up to uh, up to 42nd constitution amendment okay and similarly here uh, socialism okay social and secularism okay so uh, after so and so values what they say in our constituted assembly on this 26th day you know 26 november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution now you know what is the meaning of sovereign socialist secular you know it's a you know we will discuss you know it's a, uh, uh, see one cannot explain so sovereignty in just one lecture so your understanding of sovereign 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 will you know develop as the course will proceed similarly what is democracy you know what is uh, you know constitutional democracy you know what is governance good governance you know uh, there is no you know hard and fast definition the understanding is more important it will evolve but again just to uh, you know read something for it now let's see you know uh, what uh, you know so dr swat kachya has to say about preamble as you know you know preamble uh, was mainly derived from the objective resolution okay objective resolution if you remember dr nehru jawaharlal nehru introduced after pune sarovar raj uh, resolution uh, after pune sarovar raj resolution in the lahore in the lahore uh, indonesian congress session 1929 okay what okay let I, i will read a paragraph let's see what the what dr subhas kachap says about our preamble he says the preamble to a constitution is expected to embody the fundamental values and the philosophy on which the constitution is based you know you see fundamental values as well as the philosophy on which the constitution is based and the aim objective with the founding father enjoined the polity to strive to achieve 
you know, every very, you know, justice, liberty, equalities, you know, sovereignty, secularism, you know, these are your, these are the values. Okay. See, justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity are the most essential values of a truly democratic order and therefore only elucidate the concept of democratic republic. You know, without, you know, without these values, there cannot be democracy. Okay. The ultimate goal is that of securing the dignity of the individual and unity of the nation. You know, both things. Now, th both these are not, you know, conflicting. It's, uh, assuring uh, dignity of the individual and unity of the country. You know, there might be some conflicts. What, what are the conflicts that we will see, you know, when we will discuss, for example, when we will discuss the social justice chapter of, uh, you know, political theory, that time you will understand, okay, you know, dignity of the individual, you know, uh, aspiring for the aim of dignity of the individual and unity of the nation, they might have conflicts. So that, that time you will understand, but for the time being, we'll focus on, you know, on this thing. Now, there was a famous case, Beruwari case, you know, now, you know, whether whether preamble is part of our constitution or not. So, you know, uh, let's see what the Beruwari case says. In the in the Beruwari case, the case was uh, Beruwari, Beru, Bari case, okay. Supreme Court agreed that the preamble was the key to the mind of the framers of the constitution. Agreed. Okay, the intent, you know, whatever, you know, going the mind of the constitution, you know, for that privilege key, where the words were found to be vague or their meaning was unclear, help of the preamble could be taken to understand the intention of the framers. Now, oh, this is very, very important. Now, for example, constitution is there. As I mentioned, there, there, there are some, you know, there are many conflicts also. For example, there, there, sometimes there's a conflict between, you know, Article 14, Article 15, even equality before law, you know, and uh, you know, if, especially Article 15.4. Similarly, as, as I mentioned, Article 29.2, you know, which provides, you know, which provides uh, that, uh, you know, which says that everybody can be. Okay, let's see. Just the, then you will understand. I will open Article 29 and Article 13. Then you will understand. Okay. Yes. Now see the, this was the. You know, What's the Article 29? No citizen shall be denied admission into any educational institution maintained by the state or receiving aid out of the state funds on ground only of religion, caste, language, or any of them. Now, see, here, you know, in our fundamental rights, you know, there is adding culture and education right. There, we are talking about minority rights, you know, in Article 30. What Article 30 clearly says, rights of minorities to establish and administer educational institution what it says all minorities whether based on religion or language you know both language minority you know uh, there, there is a special office for language minority shall have the right to establish and administer an educational institution of their choice but so you know minority can administer so there but similarly here uh, they mention article 29 and 2 no citizen shall be denied admission into any Maintained by state, but the state is giving fund, you know, providing aid to minority institution as well. So uh, now, from this rise as a question, can we introduce reservation into minority institutions or not? So this is kind of a conflict. Now, uh, similarly, uh, uh, let's see, you know, uh, let's see Article 14. Now you know this is what we call analysis. When we say, now what, what is the meaning of analysis? This is what uh, analysis is. Now, you know, Article 15.3, as we, we uh, saw in, you know, in our discussion on women and children, what it says, nothing in the article shall prevent the state from making a special provision for women and children. You know, affirmative action for women and children. But can have, it has conflict with the equality before law? You know, no state shall den not deny any person equality before law or, you know, uh, equal protection of the law. Similarly, it says, 
you know, Article 15. Now, now see, you know, here, the state shall not discriminate against any citizen on grounds only. No, you know, when you read the constitution first time, you will skip this word like only, okay, like it's like any, any, any only. No, only very, very important. It shows the intent, you know, whoever is, you know, when, uh, I'm very sure, you know, when the right uh, wrote this only word, a uh, lot of debate was there. So there can be discrimination on more than two grounds, but not only on the, on, on religion. Okay, so, you know, sometimes you know, people have to choose. So only discrimination on the ground of these five is prohibited. Okay, so similarly, sometimes 15A and 15.3 maybe also have conflict, but uh, you know, only what is keyword here. So I've given you two examples like that. There are you know, many cases. So our, you know, we were discussing preamble, what it says when there is a conflict. In that case, we can refer to the, you know, to the preamble. This is very, very important. To know, so th this is what the uh, Supreme Court said in Biruwari case. But, but uh, Justice Gajendra Gadkar, now Justice Gajendra Gadkar is Chief Justice of India, you know, you will get familiar with his name. What he said, preamble was not a part of the constitution. Now see, you know, when, uh, when you uh, read many magazines, they directly say, Biruwari case said, no, preamble is not the part, you know, uh, not the part of the constitution. Don't write like an upfront statement, Go, you know, tell the full story. Constitution, uh, you know, Supreme Court said, you know, recognize the value of a preamble, you know, the meaning of preamble, you know, its importance, but it still it said that no, it's not a part of the uh, constitution. Okay, so telling full story is very, very important. Also, it did not confer any substantial power upon the legislature or other organs of the state. Okay. Okay, now there was one more case. When you wrote, write about, you know, uh, preamble, so you can mention two cases. One was this, Biruwari case. And the case was, uh, Kishwanan Bharti case. Now, Kishwanan Bharti case is very, very important. You know, in uh, 1973, if I can say, this is the most important case uh, uh, in Indian constitution history. Uh, you'll get familiarized with it. it uh, 1973, Keshwanan Bharti, 1973, you know, which gave the doctrine of a basic structure. What it said? The, in, in this case, the, what they made, you know, part, held the preamble, what the Supreme Court said, the preamble was part of the constitution and observations to the contrary in Peruvari cases were not correct. Now, you know, Keshwan and Bharti was, you know, higher bench, uh, 13 bench, uh, you know, 13 judge bench. And Peruvari, I'm, I'm not, I don't remember how many judges, but it was the largest bench, Keshwan and Bharti. So they, they overruled the, you know, verdict of Peruvari case. So at present, what is your understanding? Preamble is part of the constitution. And one more thing, you, you, you must think, you know, when, our when the constitution was adopted through voting and all those things, preamble was the part of uh, that constitution making, right? So it has to be the part of constitution. Okay. Okay, then Justice Sikri. Justice Sikri is another judge whose name you will become very familiar. You know, uh, especially his role is during the Kishun and Bharti case was very, very important. What he said, Justice Sikri said that the legislative history of the preamble to the constitution justified its importance. Th that's what I was trying to say. See, the legislative history of the preamble, you know, for example, objective resolution was there. You know, objective resolutions is mainly our preamble only. So objective resolution has, in, you know, is, you know, during the article, uh, Government of India Act 1935, uh, Government of India Act 1919, you know, during that it has importance. So preamble also has its importance. Okay, so this is what it is. Now, now, what do we do? Oh, no, you know, now you remember that in uh, what happened? Okay, now, now let, let us see what it says. But, okay, once uh, in, the, in the same case, Keshwan and Bharti case, what the uh, Supreme Court said? Any provisions of the constitution could be amended under Article 368 
only within the broad contours of preamble and of the constitution you know they are moving to basic structure part but within the broad contours of the a preamble this means preamble has become the part of a basic structure even justice agree made it the part of you know of our uh, basic structure now uh, now see what one more observation with the supreme court made the edifice of our constitution is based upon the basic elements mentioned in the preamble the, you know you have to write like this in upsc the edifice of our constitution is based upon the basic elements mentioned in the preamble if any of these elements are removed the structure will not survive and it will not be the same constitution or it cannot maintain its identity see this is the way you know judge is right <laughs> like but you know uh, this kind of understanding you know comes this, this reflects the life learning okay now talking about you know there were some words added in uh, our preamble as you have seen here you know socialist and secularism these two were added in you know 42nd constitution amendment or oh, for constitution amendment i will always write ca constitution amendment act 42nd 1976 sometimes people forget you know how to remember it remember 4 plus 2 is 6 then there was 44th that was 1978 okay this is the way you can remember so social social change secular was added and unity of uh, nation was uh, what in integrity was added you know unity of uh, unity and integrity uh, in the word integrity was added okay now you have to understand secularism is very very important just after of socialist and socialism is even more important than secularism and first thing is sovereignty you know sovereignty uh, is always you know most important thing okay now what we will do see now what is socialism what is secularism for that your books like you know uh in political theory and uh, this uh, constitution in constitution written those books will work but again what i will do you know I, i will read there you know one or two two lines from you know books and how they defined for example first we will study what, what is sovereign sovereignty what it says okay how the, you know now you know the, the, these are the definition written by you know uh, scholars it's very difficult to, for you to reproduce you know uh, right uh, definition like this in upsc but again in, in your two pager you know uh, uh, write you know keywords and divide those three four times i am sure in, you know while you will write means uh, you will also write like a scholar what how they define you know sovereignty means absolute and supreme power not subject to control by any internal or external authority so keyword you know maybe you know absolute and super power not subject to control of any internal external authority okay then there is a you know is called like kuli constitution what he says sovereignty is where there resides within itself is supreme and absolute power acknowledging no so period so you know what is the meaning you know sovereignty is talking about you know having no inter interference from other thing okay now again in keshwanand bharti case justice matthew what it said uh, you know justice matthew said india is sovereign because it could make or unmake any decision with respect without any interference you know, so again how all this information will help you when you are writing for example two pages is there when you have written topic like you know preamble sovereign sovereignty and just write you know a uh, keywords like no interference okay like that okay now okay now what i will do we will mention uh, you know something about article 13 c Uh, uh, oh, sorry, Article One, Article One, Three C. Uh, that 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 will also make the uh, the understanding of politics clear. What it says, Article One, Three C. Look, let us go to that article first. 
Yes. Now see, it's a, the article first to mention about, as you know, article one is or the name and territory of the union. Now see, India, that is Bharat. Now see, now see you know, it is just, just this word, Bharat word has not come all of a sudden. There was a debate in, you know, during constitution making, whether we should call our country India or Bharat. You know, Bharat, you know, like, there was a tribe, Bharat, in ancient India, you must have read. You know, so how, how they resolved it? They say India, that is Bharat. You know, India is mainly from Indus River. You know. So both things. So shall be union of state? Union of state, not United States. Union of states. There is a difference, you know. Our federalism is different from uh, US federalism. And state and territory shall be specified in the first schedule. They mentioned all the name of states and territory. Okay. The territory of India shall comp comprise. Okay, so now see. Territory of, of the states, union territory, such other territory as may be acquired. This is very, very important. We can acquire, but we not we cannot cede. So that's what you know in Keshwan and Bhatti case, what they said. Article 313C of the constitution has made it clear that the Union of India could acquire foreign ter territory. Also, one of the attributes of the sovereignty is the power to cede parts of national territory if necessary. All the, you know, ceding is not, not mentioned anywhere, but uh, th this is a test. You know, if we can, you know, give some part, for, for example, uh, we gave some island to. I, I forget the name of that item, some Biga, Biga to Bangladesh. Uh, you have to refer to some, some, uh, some Chalit Biga or something like that, that uh, I lent to Bangladesh, mainly for fishermen, fishermen livelihood. Okay. Okay, now one more thing. Under Article 2, 3 and 4 of the Constitution, you know, Parliament can, by ordinary legislation, establish, admit or establish new states in the union. You know, just changing the name or changing boundaries for that constitutional amendment is not required. This was a prelims question as well. So I mentioned it here. Okay. Okay, now one more thing. That at all times, sovereignty in our scheme of things based in the people themselves. So what is important in India, who is sovereign, people are sovereign. So I think uh, we have discussed sufficiently on sovereignty. Now we'll move to socialism. So, you know, word by word we will discuss. Now again, socialism, political theory work. There is a chapter, you know, there. And uh, constitution at work there also. So again, you know, this is your uh, skeleton, your constitution is skeleton. Your flesh and blood will come through constitution at work and your political theory book. I'm not, you know, I, it. it's not to say that uh, I'm altogether neglecting Lakshmi Khan. See, Lakshmi Khan, whoever written that, that is also hard work, you know. But, uh, you know, hard work, uh, bringing it in the note form, all that. But again, my idea, you know, I always uh, tell my student to quickly graduate your mind from uh, facts to ideas. You know, that ideas are mentioned in Bayer Act and your political theory and uh, constitution at work. Okay. Now see, socialism, introduced in uh, Constitution uh, uh, Amendment Act uh, 42nd. Now you have to think uh, why our Constitution Father did not adopt uh, socialism uh, when they adopted the Constitution in 1949, uh, 25th November. Now, uh, I, I don't want to go into that question now, but uh, there is a big debate here. You know, uh, as we will read, we will understand that. Now, let us see how do you define the socialism and uh, again, again, you know, defining socialism is uh, very, very difficult. Uh, but anyway, let's see. First of all, first thing you have to un uh, understand, socialism is just next to sovereign. You know, this is uh, after sovereignty, most important thing in the constitution is socialism. In our preamble is socialism, even more important than secularism. Okay, so what it, you know, socialism is to mean free from all forms of exploitation. This is a simple definition, but you know, very, very beautiful definition. But 
socialism is from rotation socio economic and political so simple okay then it you know socialism means different things to different uh, uh, people this is the way anthea says okay socialism means elimination of inequality in income and status and standard of living now if you say the spirit of socialism is also involved you know inherent in our article 39 b and c oh you know this this your understanding okay now before i go to that uh, you know article 39 b and c and other article uh, let's uh, read one more line okay what they say see uh, now after the you know after the new economic policy of liberalization free market competition entry of foreign companies divestment in public sector you know you know you know is you know uh, then you know paying more attention to the values like socialism have become even more important because after you know liberalization you know uh, you can see in how inequality is increased and uh, even even in 2019 uh, that uh, united nation development report uh, their report is what 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 is that report inequality the heading of that report is inequality okay now we will go to article 39 b and c uh, that will make something more clear okay you know 39 b and c are the part of your dpsp uh, what it says certain principle of policy to be followed by the state you know very very important article article 39 uh, b and c there is a big debate we, when we will study keshav and bharti case gulaknath case okay that time uh, what is the conflict between article 39 no not conflict you know how uh, yes there was kind of kind of conflict between article 39 b and c against fundamental rights you know what happened in 25th constitution amendment act and uh, you know things like that you know what is relation with proper uh, right to property so, so so many things you have to understand so let's see certain principle of policy to be followed by the state the state shall in particular direct policy towards okay let's see first read the first one what is it that the citizens men and women equally have the right to an adequate means of livelihood. This is the meaning of socialism. You know, in fact, you can write it like, you know, making, uh, you know, bringing Article 39 into fundamental rights is the meaning of socialism. You know, it, it will tell professor, okay, your understanding of constitution. You know, a, a report, every two year report in parliament on the implementation of Article 39 means socialism. Okay, you know, this is understanding. This is the way, you know, this is the tone your uh, punchy commission or you know sarkari commission has used similarly you have to develop that tone you know uh, you know when you have to write in upsc you have to think like you know the way cabinet secretary you know uh, chief secretary talks to you know chief minister or cabinet secretary talks to you know prime minister that tone you have to develop now see art article 39b which, which we are just talking about that the ownership and control of material resources of the community are so distributed as to serve, serve the common good. This means what? This should be, you know, equality. You know, that the operation of the economic system does not result in the concentration of wealth and means of production to the common detriment. Right? See, you know, that, that's why socialism will come, right? Now, this article is so good, you know, I think we should read Article 39D also, that there is equal pay for equal work for both man and woman see uh, then what the article th he says that the health and strength of workers men and women and the tender age of children are not abused and that citizens are not forced by economic necessity to enter avocations unsuited to their age or strength see oh, you know the tone their intent our constitution is really a very very good document but uh, to implement it in letter and spirit is another thing Okay. Now, equal just you know, similarly, equal justice and free all these is part of socialism. 
okay now what we will do okay now we will go to now uh, this thing is over now in the next word is secularism now again in political theory book there is a chapter on secularism you must read that and in that book you know mainly thing is uh, different between indian secularism and western secularism you know there is a difference you know indian secularism is something you know uh, uh, you know as they say you know sarvadharma sambhav you know this is the way they say it something even more than sarvadharma sambhav okay and uh, as you know in western secularism there is a separation what a type separation between this you know state and church so but not not so in the indian secularism in fact there was a question you know what the french uh, government french uh, french government can learn from indian secularism now this is the meaning you know uh, because of the uh, uh, the secularism of uh, west is different from the secularism of uh, india but again that uh, political theory book they have all also uh, gone into you know why the why the secularism of india is different from the secularism of west what they have mentioned now this is important in see in europe europe uh, you know europe is like a country only it's a continent but you know very much uh, schengen area is there right even uh, if you read its history right, that that plutarch was there right plutarch wrote history of europe and uh, in fact the mediterranean mediterranean is called mediterranean the meaning, what is the meaning of mediterranean mediterranean means center of the earth right before before the plot means geography uh, people uh, you know uh, understanding of humans but that uh, you know there is a only world called uh, the only sea called mediterranean and it is the center of the earth so but gradually columbus so you know new world uh, usa there then your swat kota came to india you know then so what then the artist says in europe you know society is homogeneous you know the religion is you know more or less you know same except jews people are mainly christian there except you know jews are jews are again the minority so their focus is more on individuals that's why you know they have separated church and state state will not interfere in the matters of uh, church and church will not interfere in the matters what what it says for example if a church says that women should not uh, you know should not uh, should not be should not uh, be appointed and so and so position in the in the church uh, like some some position so uh, in that case uh, state can not do this. but in india's story is different but i i will recommend you again Read that chapter on secularism and the secularism from political theory book. Very very important chapter. Okay, and what I have told you, they mentioned the same thing. Okay. Okay. Now let's see uh, what uh, Indian secularism is and uh, what you know different justices has told uh, said about uh, uh, secularism. Okay. Now secularism is very very important. We will devote some time here. you will see what different uh, justices said what you know what ncert says what constitution at work ncert says okay now let's see now the simple thing is indian constitution indian secularism is something more something more something called sarva dharma sambhav this means many religions can coexist it is you know, even something more than sarva dharma sambhav it is both positive as well as negative okay western secularism it is state neutrality in religion matter you know western secularism is state neutrality you know state will have neutral they will be neutral this is the keyword in religious matter okay indian secularism is treating all religion equal okay. so again whenever you are making your one page on secularism whatever you know i am saying or when you read try to assimilate that um, notes in your and now let us uh, i will just read some part what the dictionary definition of the secularism is not spiritual or not concerned with religion this is the, you know this is the way dictionary defines now you know again if you read second year c reports or you know many 
how they start defining something. They just first they mention this dictionary meaning. You know, and this is the way you because defining something is very any term is very difficult. But uh, dictionary, you know, dictionary uh, have kind of a crux of many definitions. So what dictionary says, uh, similarly you can also write. This. Okay. Then uh, one scholar, A. R. Blackshield, you know what he said. He said, the secular state is a state which keeps individual and corporate freedom of religion is not constitutionally connected to a particular religion does not nor does it seek either to promote or interfere in that religion you know many what is the, you know what freedom of there and neither interference in the religion okay then there was you know supreme court justice just to decide what it's what he said is secular state deals with the individual as a citizen irrespective of his religion now see very simple you know and you know sober definition now justice uh, you know you know there was a justice uh, again jauddin what he said the secular state so sorry justice mh big mh big it is very very famous justice you will get familiarized with him M.H. Big, M.H. Big. In fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you, uh, over a period of time, you will understand, you know, uh, Justice Khanna. You know, there is a special lecture for Justice Khanna in judiciary. You know, uh, when we will discuss ADM Jawalpur case and Indira Gandhi versus Narayan case, then you will understand, okay, why the judiciary every year conducts a special lecture on Justice Khanna. And what time, the, what time that time, you know, uh, Justice uh, Chandra Chun, you know, not the, the senior Chandra Chun, right? And A.N. Roy, what they were doing that time, you know. So it's a big story. That it will come, you know, that time. Okay, what Justice uh, M.H. Beck says about secularism? A secular state rises above all differences of religion, attempt to secure the good of all citizens, irrespective of their religions, religious beliefs and practices. See? Very, very simple definition. Okay. Now, S.R. Bumai case. Uh, S.R. Bumai case, again, you know, it's a very, very important uh, judgment related to Article 356. You know, in, in fact, in, it was in uh, S.R. Bumai case. I will write it. S.R. Bumai case. You will become, uh, you know, uh, you will become familiar with S.R. Bumai case, Keshwan and Bharti, Kulaknath, and you know, Vadva case related to ordinance. So the famous ju judgment in S.R. case 1994. Oh, you know, in this judgment, uh, Supreme Court said that not only the failure of administrative machinery, but constitution machinery should be the you know basis for implementing for introducing Article 356 in a particular state. 356 is governor rule. Okay. Okay, what it said in a okay now SR Bomai case also discussed about secularism. What it said, what it said, uh, you know, it justified the proclamation under Article 356 imposing precedent rule in the BGP rule state aftermath of Babri Majid, you know, on aftermath of Babri Majid demolition on the ground of threat to secularism. Now, see, this is important. You know, what it says, you know, uh, you know, there was a precedent rule was introduced in, you know, many BJP ruled states by the center. In that time, in the center was Congress. So, as our Bumai judgment say, okay, now there is a threat, threat to And threat to them is introduced what reflects failure of constitution machinery. So this this is the importance of you know uh, what factors in our constitution. Now, okay. Now, you know if if you want to have more better understanding of cyclism, reading Article uh, twenty five to twenty eight, you know it is very very important. What it says the preamble of the constitution read in particular with Article twenty five to twenty eight 
emphasizes this aspect and indicates that it is in this manner the concept of secularism embodied in the constitution. Now we will go to article 25 and 28. So you know, this is the way your understanding of secularism will improve. Okay. 25 to okay. Now see what is the name of the chapter? Right to freedom of religion. Now what it says? Freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion. Subject to public. Now so there is a limitation also, you know. Okay, what is the limitation? Public order. Now what is public order again is a you know, big thing. No, for the time being, you can understand. This is the way second RC defined. See, the most important is national security. Okay, like so. So next community. Then comes your public order. Then comes your law and order. Okay, so the, the difference is the degree. And uh, to, to understand more about public order, then we will discuss public order report of second RC. Then we will go into okay. So something more than you know something more than law and order is public order, subject to public order, morality and health, and to the other provisions of this part, all persons are equally entitled to freedom of conscience and right to free, right freely to profess, practice and propagate religion. Now, so this is a fun, you know fundamental right. Now this is the way you can define you know secularism. National Constitution Review uh, Commission. Now there is a lot of controversy on the what was the recommendation, uh, Dr. Savate? You define secularism in our constitution. Now this is a big thing, you know, defining secularism in our constitution. You know, if you define secularism, you know, there you will not say you know go read an NCRT or some here and there or read Manusnati something. No, you define it here in constitution only. What do you mean by secularism? Okay, then. Nothing in this article shall affect the operation of any existing law or prevent the state from making any law. Okay. So like, like this. Now, now see like this. Article 26. Freedom to manage religious affairs. Very, very important article. It's giving you know fundamental right. Subject again here, subject to public order, morality, and health. Okay. Again, why health, you know? We will discuss it here. Also, it's a very interesting story. Very uh, uh, every religious uh, denomination or any section thereof shall have the right to establish and maintain institution for religious and charitable purposes. Yes, you know, uh, you have seen many akhadas. You know, you know, many different religions have their you know different uh, uh, institutions. So uh, they they drive their authority from this article. To manage its own affairs in the matter of religion, Tirupati, you know, if I'm not mistaken, Tirupati Temple have you know uh, two special commissioners for uh, tourists to look after how much you know uh, that chadava, you know, offerings the temple gets every day. So that's you know to own and acquire movable and immovable property to administer administer such property in accordance with law. Okay, then Article 27, 27, freedom as to payment of taxes for promotion of any particular religion. See, any particular religion, payment of taxes. See, what they say, no person shall be compelled to pay any taxes, the proceeds of which are specifically appropriated in payment of expenses for the promotion of any particular, you know, no, nobody can force you, okay, this particular region is being promoted, so pay taxes. No, that's not a part of Indian constitution directly. Okay, 28, freedom as to attendance at religion is instruction or religious worship in certain education. Is, okay, so what they say, no religious instruction shall be provided in edu any educational institution wholly maintained out of state funds. Clear, you know, very clear cut instruction, no religious instruction out of state funds. Okay, what what is then again? Nothing is clause one shall apply to an education institution which is administrated by the state but has been established under any endowment or trust. That, then it's it, you know, its story becomes different. You know, so do you see, you know, why why you know 
by the supreme court says that uh, the spirit of uh, secularism is embedded in article 25 to 28 everything is mentioned there now you know what the, the unlike okay uh, unlike unlike the west in india secularism had never born out of the conflict between the church and the state so you know in west if you remember if you remember the, you know there was a long history you know uh, magna carta was there then before that if you remember uh, the, you know that conflict uh, between mainly muslims and christians there, there was a long history of war we call crusaders crusaders right crusaders then uh, at last the fall of jerusalem to saladin things like that so, so this is a long history out of that you know evolved the concept of uh, secularism in west okay okay now let's see what it says you know as we mentioned it, it, it is also called sarv dharm sambhav what it means treating all religions alike sarv dharm sambhav means treating all religion alike or giving equal respect to all religion instead of dharm nirpeksh or pant nirpeksh now you know you may use words like this in your upsc answer sheet what is what is dharm nirpeksh or pant nirpeksh dharm dharm nirpeksh you know neutrality that is the western concept of secularism so indian secularism is sarv dharm sambhav not dharm dharm nirpeksh you know not neutrality okay okay then uh, secularism in our concept only means that ours was a non theocratic state that the state as much does not have its own religion and all religions are equal and it will make no distinction between religions on the grounds of religion that's why india has no state religion it's very very important you know you can also say you know that you, you see that not you know it's not having india is a non theocratic uh, state and that is a one characteristic of our secularism okay now again justice kajind gadkar you know how he defined uh, secularism the state does not own loyalty to any particular religion as such it is not irreligious or anti religious you know there is no particular uh, loyalty to any religion but it is not irreligious or anti religious you know indian secularism sought to establish a relational sorry a rational synthesis between legit okay now this is this is important legitimate functions of religion and the legitimate and expanding function of the state so what the indian secularism is doing it is striking a you know balance synthesis between state function of state and the functions of religion okay so this is very very important okay now there was a you know in the keshwanand bharti and okay keshwanand bharti and again there is a minerva mill case minerva mill case you will also get familiarized and uh, especially uh, you know with relation to uh, conflict between article 13 and b and c and uh, fundamental rights okay what it says in both in keshwanand bharti case and minerva mill case secularism was made a basic was made a part of the basic feature of the constitution you know basic feature so making secularism a part of basic feature is you know big big thing okay then it, there was another case you know st javier college st javier college society case uh, versus state of gujarat in 1974 okay so whatever i am speaking uh, while you reading you know while listening to lectures you know try to make, make short notes okay what it says that even though the constitution did not speak of a secular state there could be no doubt that the constitution makers wanted to establish such a state now this is very very important secularism we introduced through 1942nd constitution amendment but again the idea of secularism was inherent in the psyche of our constitution father okay now this is what it is now what i will do uh, i will read one uh, last definition and then we will move to uh, you know uh, other uh, next term that is democracy let's see
okay what they say is not withstanding anything the only operative interpretation of that term secular in indian constitution law now would be what can be gathered from the different provision of the constitution how see okay now since we have not defined the secularism very clearly so how we will you know derive its uh, meaning from article 14 15 16 19 you know uh, then article 25 to 28 we have already discussed and article 44 article 44 uniform civil code you know very very important now i will you know the thing we are here i i will just go through you know again what it says the state shall endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code of the territory of india now supreme court has mentioned many times that uh, uniform civil code has been in that letter but again you know this is you know you have to understand introducing uniform civil code in a country like india is not not very easy right again india is a community of communities different religions you know different uh, even caste you know so one is to introduce a uniform civil code it should come through consent you know society should be you know uh, should uh, uh, you know adopt it in letter is spirit not through law and law and order no that will fail you know uh, law and order cannot just uh, a constitution amendment just bringing a constitution amendment will not change the uh, socio economic situation of india so this is what it is now i think uh, Uh, we will close for today and uh, next next uh, uh, what is the meaning of uh, democracy republic all this uh, injustice we will discuss so uh, again uh, what i will suggest uh, read the you know so sovereign and secular understanding of secularism from political theory book make two pages and the lecture we will discuss democracy and other things another article okay thank you very much